What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and Charles William Carpenter III. Today, we're going to see if we can hear Chuck's landscapers or not. It's yeah, our, that's our game. That's a big game lately. Yeah. Based on my current recording location, I am closer in proximity to landscapers in throughout all of the Phoenix area, apparently. They just do a little drive-by whenever I'm recording, and you get a... So we'll see Maybe if you're lucky or not this time. Yeah. We have a special guest today. Mal, what's going on? Hello. I am excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you. Can you give the folks at home a few sentences about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so my name is Mal, short for Melissa. I'm from Canada. I'm an analytics engineer, just a developer. And I guess I am exploring content creation as well. I don't know, even what I do. <laughs> nice. That's like a thing in Canada, right? You can't be called an engineer anymore unless you have like an engineering specific degree. And so you have to be mm. developer. Mm -hmm. They really like zoned oh, in wow. on that. Yeah. Like they have that rule. And I think you have to have a license or something like that. They don't actually come after you. I think like my company has called us engineers, but yeah. I would just say developer online. Fair enough. Yeah. Don't yeah. invite trouble. No. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So let's start with some whiskey here. Chuck, you okay. want to tell us about it? Fair enough. Okay. Today we're having the Rabbit Hole Cave Hill Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 95 proof. So a little higher, but not crazy. Aged over three years and has a mash bill of 70% corn, 10% malted wheat, 10% malted barley. Malted wheat. Yeah, that's what it said. And 10% really? honey malted barley. So they have a real mix of things mm. in the way that they're trying to enhance the flavors of the grains. Yeah. I wish they had um, malted it more. Yeah, like, oh, could we get more malt in this? So, yeah, bottled by the Rabbit Hole Distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. I don't know if it's made there or not, but anyway. Mm. You know, they sponsor gin uh, Whiskey Ginger. They're like the main sponsor which is another podcast with a less funny yeah, Which I'm sure Mal host. listens to all the time, being not a drinker. <laughs> no, this is the only whiskey yeah. podcast I listen to. <laughs> okay, that's right. You get your whiskey knowledge direct from the experts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it does smell good, though. Nice waft about it. Let's see here. Yeah. We've had a couple of bears before, and that's why I picked it as, as I think, something uh, for someone who doesn't drink whiskey very often, if at all. You yeah. said, like, not much in spirits, but what would you have normally, like a tequila or something? Or? Uh, yeah, I think if I am drinking, I like gin the best, or tequila, uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I like gin. And I need something very different from whiskey if I'm going to stray away what would be very different from whiskey gin gin is a good start i think it's very different from whiskey with that whole like floral or herbaceousness to it sometimes a little citrus my go-to drink is a negroni which is like yeah a mix between that floral a little sweet a little bitter it's also very strong so i wouldn't have more than two of those but that's my jam Oh, I love a gin and tonic, but I had no idea for like a year. I was drinking so many of them. I didn't know that tonic had so much sugar, just like any other soda. I right. thought it was like soda water and I stopped drinking <laughs> them. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. They make diet ones that are okay. What is that nice brand? There's like a really nice brand and they make a diet one and I will try to get that sometimes. Is it Fever Tree maybe? Yes. Oh, their Boom. stuff is good. Yeah. Their stuff yeah. is good and they make a diet. So I don't know. Not that you're old like me and, and need that probably, but <laughs> I have to consider that. I have a very slow metabolism, so. All right, so about this whiskey. I do smell a lot of sweetness. I'm trying to, like, narrow it yeah. in. I did eat a bag of gummy bears before this, so I'm unsure if I'm getting that. or <laughs> It smells a little bit candy-like to me. If you can't tell, Robbie doesn't give a shit about sugar. He will have it all. <laughs> He'll eat a whole yeah, bag listen, of you sugar. You could die tomorrow, right? Like, yeah. Hey, yeah. I worked out today, though. What'd you do? What did I do to work out? Yeah, I did. 
squats and bench and barbell row. Sweet, bro. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little floral now. I think I was like talking about gin too much. And I, so mm. here, it, here's the thing, mom, is that it's all made up anyway. So you sort of like, you smell, you know, want, people do it with wine and other thing. Coffee is actually even too. And you'll just kind of, you know, see what, what connects in your brain. And that's the right answer. My answer is different from yours. It's different from Robbie's and it all kind of, until we like influence you by saying things. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I've actually been to a wine tasting where someone there was saying that he got hints of whatever in the, uh, what is it? A sommelier? He was oh, yeah. like, no, yeah. there's none of that in there. And just like shut him down. <laughs> I had to take up and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Elitist mm. pricks. Yeah. I think funny. it's a little bit subjective. So, yeah. You know. Well, I think folks educated in like a sommelier or educated in, in whiskey and like, you know, it's part of their job or whatever else. I think they start to agree on a common vernacular. And then that's sort of their right answer. But in general, you're just coming up with other sensory words that make sense to you. And I'm not like on the in with that inside vernacular. So what I say is like, oh, that smells like honeysuckle is probably lavender, to, you know, <laughs> to, to experts or whatever, connoisseurs. I know what I like and I can just derive based on previous experience, but it doesn't mean I really know shit for anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. This one's really mild to me, actually. I get a little bit of like, almost like fl flat orange crush with like a slight cinnamon. Yeah. You know, the yeah, orange crush. Once soda? you said that, I, I can taste that. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a method to tasting whiskey? Mm. Mm -hmm. Like wine, perhaps? Yeah. There is. And it's not that dissimilar. So we like have these glasses, it's like a Glencarn shape, and it's supposed to like help the alcohols not, not, yeah, you know, doesn't hit you in the face nose. as much. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, diffuse so them slightly. This, this cup was all right. <laughs> no, that cup's <laughs> fine. No, that's fine. That's actually. I don't, I don't know. I'm drinking glasses. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't drink, then what do you need that for? <laughs> yeah. And th that bear, did you buy those from Jay? I mean, all bears are Jay as far as I'm. The J, like the J-H-E-Y guy who does like amazing CSS stuff on Twitter. I'm not sure I know who that is, actually. Mm. If you're interested in like crazy CSS tricks. Yeah. Cool animation stuff. Cool animations. Oh, so. okay, cool. Yeah, I do follow a couple people. I don't use it at all myself, but I do find it you know, fun to look at. Yeah, yeah. Kind of same. So there's that, and then you put your nose. This is also very much like a, a wine thing where you like put your nose and breathe through your mouth so you don't take in so much. Mm. Oh, I do enjoy the smell of it, though. Yeah, yeah, it has a nice smell. It's like kind of sweet and, and pleasant there. And then you're supposed to sort of like prime your taste buds. Is it chewing your whiskey? So the mm -hmm. first drink, you take some and you kind of swish it around to activate your salivatory glands because it's getting this like strong alcohol. So that will coat that a little bit, get them activated. And then your next taste, then you'll be able to pick up more flavors. Because it, yeah. <laughs> it's, <drop. laughs> it's fair. Hey, the, we, we've, we've sent out higher proofs. So I was, I was mindful of like, you know, what, what I thought would be a more like neutral palate and, mm -hmm. you know, not super weak, but not crazy. So, yeah. And yeah. you can get it in Canada. That was also like a, a third <laughs> yeah. requirement is mm -hmm. oh, we man. could both get that. I mean, turns out it's hard to ship alcohol to other countries. Weird, yeah. right? It's actually really <laughs> yeah. easy Why? to do it in the UK <laughs> because I found a company that will take freedom dollars and then let me send. <laughs> but in, in Canada, it's really hard. Hmm. I, don't, so I don't know. You wouldn't, I wouldn't think that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know a lot of it has like to do that. with like the regulation countrywide and like this, you know, the the government sponsored stores and I don't know. It's just weird. I wonder but, if it's also something with Quebec cuz it's just different from the rest of Canada and the yeah. I love it here, but it was <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. So you like cold weather? I hate cold weather. <laughs> so I was I know, I was in Vancouver. 
quite expensive, but I love mm. the the city. I liked, I wanted the European like inspiration of Quebec though. And yeah. I actually, I like how they live here. I like the French, how they live life. It's a lot of fun. It's less about work. Yeah. I think like yeah. that stereotype is pretty true. If I could have the people of Montreal, but the city of Vancouver, that would be the best. Oh, that's Because so... it's not really pretty here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. oh, also, wait, I think uh, I saw this. Uh, comment t'appelles tu? Oh, yeah, I'm learning French. I know like nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. I know from like middle school and high school kind of stuff. So I, I, I didn't have to learn it. Mm. Well, Vancouver, right? You wouldn't. Is that where you grew up? Well, Vancouver? I grew up in Edmonton. So I'm used to the cold because it's okay. quite cold there. And then I got away from it and then I came back. I was not excited about winter mm, that's fair <laughs> you know what helps when it's cold whiskey, whiskey. <laughs> whiskey i am warm already from it yeah <laughs> it, it's called the hug and it warms you from the inside that's oh, that's oh. what i call it i think i made that up yeah it's trademarked so don't don't go making i think you heard it somewhere with that don't go making shirts with that yet <laughs> anyway so we have a highly sophisticated rating system. It is because we are developers. It is zero to eight tentacles. Zero being horrible, you'd never have this again. Eight being amazing, you'll probably never have any other alcohol or spirit again. Mm. Which is probably like overselling it. I'm not sure that's exactly what it means. But mid four is like <laughs> just the best. Number. Not great. Not terrible. It's all right. So, and I won't make you go first. So you can ponder that scale. I will make Robbie go first, though, I think. Okay. Because he's got his emo, like, beanie on. Listen, I'm just channeling myself from 10 years ago. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or more years than that. I don't know how fucking old I am now. <laughs> anyway, this is pretty good. It's not, compared to the other rabbit hole, the Derringer, that we liked. I don't think it's as good. Um but I wouldn't avoid it. I would give it a, a solid 5.7, I think. Mm, 5.7. Yeah. Okay. I, I I agree with you. It's it's actually, like, it's strong, but it is overall a bit milder. And I was only catching a couple of flavors here. So the other one that we had, I think, was the Derringer. And it's finished in a wine barrel or, like, a port. Or Cabernet some, or port, I forget. Cabernet, yeah. So it's finished in a wine barrel, so it has, like, some interesting roundness to that. So I probably would prefer that one. I would give this just a flat five. I'd give it a five. It's better than average. It's very drinkable. Right. Well, well in my limited experience, I think mm -hmm. because it's actually not that hard to drink, I was going to say, like, a six or six and a half. Mm -hmm. Because, well, I guess I don't even know what other whiskey I would recommend. But I think if I saw it on a menu and someone was debating, I'd be like, oh, that was easy to drink. I would recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. See, this yeah. whole thing is subjective. So, yeah. I think that's <laughs> yeah. a pretty good criteria there. So, I did a good job, is what you're saying. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We should talk a little tech, right? We should do hot takes. Hot yeah. takes. Hot takes. Ooh, I love hot takes. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Did you just read the list? I just read the list now. Yeah. Oh, no, Robbie, I'm scared so we, now. No notes. And <laughs> Robbie made some edits. So I'll just start at the top of the list. Maybe you can go further down. Work our way down. Yeah. Yeah. Get rebase or get merge. Which one am I picking? Whichever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. The question like? is, do you prefer get rebase or get merge? Rebase. Solid. I like how you just leaned into it. Rebase, you're all <laughs> mergers are Easy. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> VS code or NeoVim? Oh my god, VS code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I feel like the people that use Vim like flex on everybody else and it's exactly. impressive to watch. They do. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're yeah. good with it. It wouldn't make me better and that is why I choose a different tool. Yeah. Uh, sidebar on the left or right in VS Code. Oh my God, the left. Yeah. Do people do it's, the right? Yes, they yes. do. I've people are yeah. never seen this. About it. Yeah. Why? Yeah, so I, 
I got feedback because we talked about this in a, oh, another one, and someone said it's because when they show and hide the sidebar, which I never do, I just keep it open, their code doesn't jump around if it's on the right side. Like the code <laughs> will always be left alone. What an I'm arbitrary like, reason. I don't want to see it the is transition. a really arbitrary reason. Yeah, yeah, I do hide that sometimes just to get it. You know, I'm very blind. I make my text very big and people make fun of me for it and that just gives me a little more real estate especially if i don't have a big screen if i'm just on the laptop i want to like plus plus and i would just get that out of the way so i do command p to like sort through and, and like jump to files a lot anyway mm -hmm. this isn't yeah. about me okay <laughs> no it has to be on the left it makes sense it's like the way you read the side you drive like i just think it's normal to look left yeah yeah, it's not very European of you, though, to, to not want to drive on the right. I'm just... Well, Isn't that the UK? Or are there other places? Uh, No, there are other places. Spain, I think. So it's the UK for sure. I think Spain. I know it's not Italy. I don't know. I only rode bikes in Amsterdam, so I don't know. Anyway, yeah, there's a I couple think actually, places. Japan? I don't know how, how I can't remember this, but I think Thailand might... I've been there like countless times, and for some reason, I can't remember what side of the road we did. Did you on. ever drive though? Because <laughs> yeah. I, no. especially in Bangkok, I was yeah, like, if you nope. haven't driven, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, and I was no. driven, so yeah, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's a hot take of like actually the left side makes more sense, I think, because of the reasoning of why they did that. Which I don't want to be a complete history nerd and like go too much into this, but. It's because, like, you could sword fight when you pass someone on it's your like horse. It's like jousting. Yeah. So it's like the jousting so, like, equivalent in a car. Yeah. So, like... Why can't you do that the other way, though? So why did we switch that? I guess because people weren't fighting on horses as much. <laughs> yeah, like, because... And you want to use your right hand versus your left hand because the inverse, the normal way, would force you to use your left hand as your joust hand which only right. future leaders of the world are left-handed so it just wouldn't work out but if we're driving yeah. on the other side the right side then yeah. i could use my dominant hand. so it kind of makes sense to actually be on the other side i'm not I'm sure i followed that but yes the your <laughs> dominant hand like you want to be able to sword fight with your dominant hand so it's like yes it depends okay. if you're left or right-handed but yeah mm -hmm. yeah there we go. TBD on that one, I guess. <laughs> okay. Here's one. What do you think? Oh, wait. I think this is Robbie's question. Oh, yeah. I'm going to skip this one. with his hair. And go, <laughs> sequel or no sequel? Squeal. Uh, sequel. No strong opinions. Just okay. A general Not a very preference. hot take. You should tell yeah, people yeah. that, that's, like, uh, no sequel suck and... Uh, <laughs> squeal or no squeal and you say That's squeal not a very hot take yeah <laughs> okay what's worse a pm or a magician what's the difference oh my First god of all. a pm mm. project manager or a product or, manager yeah project yeah yeah project managers are such an archaic you know ideological artifact of 20 years ago that they keep trying to make happen. Stop stop trying to make fetch happen. Stop it's trying not. to make PMs happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Anyway. I feel bad because I think that there's something wrong with him. It's just because of his role. But I joined stand-up and he's the only one there. I've like physically been like, oh. Like, I, I won't say good morning until <laughs> everyone else is there. Right, right. Yeah, I was going to say, does anyone else show up eventually? Because you got to figure then, and you know, there's the whole pigs and chicken analogy to Scrum, and he's very much a chicken. So Wait, what the now? pigs aren't there, you leave. What is this I don't now? know this. I don't know you this. You don't know analogy. this? Okay, so there's this, yeah, maybe it's an old agile Scrum thing or whatever, but it's like the pigs and chickens analogy because, what is it, to that chickens are involved but pigs are committed because pigs get slaughtered you know kind of thing so you like your so if you but are on the team get slaughtered too it's the, the, no not not in the breakfast analogy so chicken eggs, oh, it's yeah. breakfast. They don't get eggs. Slaughtered. okay eggs. the bacon comes yeah. sorry yeah that that's an important nuance to bear in mind 
so for breakfast, pigs and chickens. So the pigs are yeah. committed. Although Chick Fil A breakfast is delicious, I was don't, not allowed don't to get derail, it this morning. Yeah, don't don't derail <laughs> me here. I'm on a I'm on a roll. So yeah, the whole I- ideology in a scrum is that chickens can, anyone can come to a stand up, but the pigs are the ones who you know talk about what they did they get their value and they get out it's a short thing if anybody mm-hmm. tries to be like oh well i'm a pm and i want to know about blah 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 okay well you 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 sidebar that because you're not the mm. important person in this particular meeting mm. anyway yeah pigs and chickens look it up there are there's a whole <laughs> thing about this you can find comics you can find yeah whatever i'm glad uh, robbie gets to say this next one though you put it on yeah. there I did. Just outing you. Yeah. Was penis Botox a mistake? It was not. The one centimeter was worth it. I got okay. the feedback. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think so that that's... whole thing is insane. Yeah. Oh Brian God, Johnson. I yeah. I mean, he's insane in general. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a whole other post where he was like talking about how his sleep time boner boners have gone up like the frequency of them yeah, and there's more a than an 18 of that. year old yeah all oh i want to know is how do you yeah how do you measure that though like what's he's got a guy device with a or job who's just yeah. watching <laughs> who just comes with a you know oh yep looks like there's one there now still there yeah get go yeah oh like what God. are the penis boner monitor like where's that's a startup maybe that's a startup i don't know Boner monitor AI. Let's let's mm-hmm. found that. Hey. I uh, don't even remember why he got it. I just remember the one centimeter and him being like post injection massage. I'm like, kind of weird. You told everyone you got jerked off. Right. Yeah. And like eight <laughs> weeks of this too. By the way, you know, You're oh like, my but God, I eight weeks. Yeah, it was like a whole thing. So it took. That was the other thing. It's like you're gonna go and get needles there and just do a whole bunch of things that do, that that doesn't sound great to me. But okay, you opt in, and then it was like eight weeks, and then the centimeter increase, and I'm I'm thinking, I don't think that's changing anyone's life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're not getting on video for that, you know. So yeah, it was just such a weird thing. Yeah. Oh, the next one is me. Dogs or cats? Oh, dogs. Very easy. That's the correct answer. You guys both have dogs, then? I do, Chuck. Well. Yeah, Chuck had, I'll tell Chuck's story. Chuck had cats and was super allergic to them and had to get rid of them. I'm Deal super dear. allergic to my dogs, but I don't get rid of them. <laughs> I'm allergic oh, to no. everything, but this grew over time. And I lived with cats for eight years. I did my time oh and my I had this like crazy surgery and all this stuff and test done. And they were like, yeah, you really, unless you want to do this again. You're you really shouldn't live with pets, and I'm like just like any pets, I'm not you know hypoallergenic. I like animals, but mm-hmm. it just like you though. Yeah, and they were like, no, d- zero. I mean, if you want to have a zero chance of this surgery again, you just zero. You could be a snake so. guy. I was gonna say snake, like <laughs> yeah, no getting, pets at all. Yeah, none whatsoever. I I looked into getting desert tortoises because there's a thing in Arizona Mm. where like you can adopt desert tortoises, which they live like a hundred years, and like it would be really cool. And we have some friends that have them. Just you, yeah, they definitely outlive you, and then let the next owner figure it out. Their problem. But we have some friends that have a couple, and yeah, they're really cool and chill and giant. Like they're like dinosaurs, but we are nomadic people, the carpenters, Mm. and. I want to GTFO and mm-hmm. let's make that harder. It's, re- you know, they <laughs> yeah. let, they let kids in and out of countries a lot easier than they do pets. So, you know, it's kind of like a uh, big turtle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought about getting them anyway and giving them to my father-in-law just cause like, that's just fun. But uh, yeah. anyway, that's tangential. So Leave I like that. Leave them in pets. your will to your most least favorite person. Yeah, that's so many people these days, though. So, you know, I don't know who, how many turtles am I going to get, you know? <laughs> It'll be a big surprise one day when a turtle shows up to Robbie's house and he's like, I thought we were close, bro. <laughs> hey, Caitlin used to have a turtle and uh, it was like that. this. 
It wasn't well, like it was a little bigger, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as big as what you're That's describing. That's what she said. But well, yeah, it was about a, <laughs> about a centimeter bigger than what you're talking about. <laughs> this is really going down a path. Um. Anyway, <laughs> so here's what I want to know: What exactly does an analytics engineer do? An analytics developer do? Yeah. Um. Oh, that's the thing is actually, side note, I feel like analytics engineer sounds better. Analytics developer just does a roll off the tongue. Right. But yeah. I feel like it's kind of a cross between a data engineer and a data analyst. Because, you know, the whole like ELT pipeline. Mm-hmm. I feel like we don't do actually much of setting up the extraction, like getting the data into our warehouse. We have like a platform team for that. Although... Some people on the team like dabble in that, but I don't really want to deal with AWS, so I don't do that. Uh, So we mostly do like the T, like transformation. So we like clean stuff up, make new models, basically do things that we might not trust an analyst with to make the best like data data decisions. I think they kind of stick to making analyses on top of other things we've done or making dashboards. So we're like kind of in between. But yeah, I would say a cross between data engineer and data analyst. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. In my mind, it seemed kind of like a business operations kind of thing. And give or take, sort of like create tools to give them more options in terms of like data and analysis, right? Yeah, I think if I had to put it like in the most simple terms is people will ask us questions and we will answer it by building new assets so you know like combining information from different tables and giving them a new product to answer their question directly so i basically just do sql like 90 percent of my job is sql uh the rest is maybe a bit of python maybe a bit of like supporting in like the dashboard or the pipeline stuff but just kind of coding sql all day long Mm. so you also hate semicolons and brackets oh my god no semicolons, no brackets. Oh. It's always one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Oh, I love punctuation. Give us more punctuation. Yeah, it's the number one reason why Robbie would never touch Python, never look at a Django project, anything else. He's just like, which I, yeah. I like Python. I, Python is like speaking Me too. a little bit. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's closer you have to, to language. Press space bar so many times. <laughs> tabs oh or spaces. God. That could have been a hot, a hot take. Tabs Just or spaces. Just configure your many. tabs. Yeah. Well, that Listen, too. Bro. But I see, I don't space anything. Like I just write it as a big gross line and then auto format mm. it. Like <laughs> you hit save and prettier saves you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Prettier is the best. Anyway. Yeah. So follow up question. What's the difference between a data warehouse and a data lake? Oh, my God. (laughs) I don't know the answer. So you can say whatever you want. Yeah. Honestly, I don't have to deal with this like at all. I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I don't either. I just. There was a big meeting that I didn't pay attention to where we were discussing this at one point and we ultimately settled on a data lake house, which is apparently a thing and sounds really cool. And it's a mix of data warehouse and data lake is a data lake. House. I've wow. never heard of lake house. I love it uh-uh. though. Yeah. I think my problem is that being a self-taught developer is that there are so many things that I haven't learned because like, you know, I didn't take a course, like it's just all through work. So there are a lot of terms that we don't use at work or are like company specific. So I've actually yeah been in an interview where they'll ask me something like that, that I, I should know, but because it's just never come up at work, it's kind of like, hey, we have a data warehouse. I'm like, okay. And then no one has ever said like the words data like to me. And when someone asked me that question, I'm like, no idea because we don't talk about it at work. And so... One of my issues, yeah, when I was even just trying to transition from an analyst to a developer is kind of like the lingo felt like they were gatekeeping mm-hmm. because yeah. people would ask me questions using like data terms, but I just didn't know them as that. And I could be doing something for like the past year, but I don't know what it's called. And when you ask me in an interview, I'm like, I don't know what you mean, but it could be something that I, I'm still very good at. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a big problem of like, uh, you don't know what you don't know. So like, how would mm -hmm. you know to even look up what is this thing called? Because it's like, you don't know that it has a term like there. I don't know how you get around that other than just like people telling you like, you know, I don't know, pairing with other people and like watching what they do and being like, what do you call that? Or whatever. <laughs> but like, I feel like that's a big problem for people learning is like, you know, they can probably do most of the work, but yeah, they can't use the same vernacular as like what someone else might or something. Yeah. And I'd almost say that like even a formal education in that path may not fill those voids because yep. oftentimes, you know, universities, colleges or whatever are behind what is happening currently, like Lake House. Mm -hmm. Do you think any... Any college course is covering Lake House, I would be really surprised. And so then it's more of a, like an experience and tenure kind of thing and just being in the industry in general, like going to conferences and learning about new products and like, mm -hmm. you know, applying the because I'm sure that's just another tool that you can apply the skills you already have on. So, you know, it's just a matter of of just getting exposure. So that's almost like just time and tenure to a degree. Yeah, I agree. I used to keep like a running like notepad of words that I would hear in in like a meeting or something and go look them up after. Yeah. So that's kind of how I learned like new, maybe data specific terms. But besides that, like if I don't have to use it at work and no one's ever said it, I don't really feel a need to go look up. I don't even know how I would look these things up, you know, like a yeah. data glossary. Like, I don't know. So there's so many things that I don't know. And I think it has made my imposter syndrome a lot worse than if I had like gotten a degree or something. So it's definitely something I would say is a con to being self-taught, but I just try not to let it get to me. Like I can do my job perfectly fine. Yeah, for sure. I'm self-taught and I think that, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can understand some of that. Obviously I wasn't, I'm not in the same position doing the same things as you, by you know, by all means, but I just think that, you can get the tools to get the job done and you have passion and aptitude. And I respect that a lot. And I think that goes a long way and the blanks will just get filled in really. Yeah. Like yeah. it's been, it's been three years and I, and I can't, I've done my job. I've been promoted and I can't tell you the difference between a lake and a warehouse. So. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Neither can I. And yeah. you know, so I bet what most people can't. I want to, I want to try this. So we post questions on Spotify when we publish these. I'm going to ask, Ooh. what's the difference? And I want someone to tell me without looking it up. If you don't already know, don't look it up. So I want to see how many people actually know or have yeah. a guess. Feel free yeah. to guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was first, when I first heard that term, it was actually through the product Snowflake. And that was an engineering manager for like, a big marketing like analytics product and a, a data lake was just where we dumped a bunch of stuff. So we would like take all the data from other places and throw it there. And this snowflake thing would do some magic for us to let us like run some additional analysis on it. But I, I never even like thought the question. I was like, okay, big lake to me is just a larger footprint. So it looks like we're just going to put everything there and it can handle it. And it can probably handle these queries a little faster or something of that nature. That's a total guess. I never thought to <laughs> look it up at the yeah. time. My guess is and it's I thought, less structured. Like a warehouse sounds like you can go to a row and a column and like find right, a thing. Right, right. And the lake and a data is lake flowing. is like, ah, data. Yeah. Like, is that a bunch of like <laughs> elastic graphs tossed together? I don't know. It's hard to know. say. I, I was going to guess and I was going to say, I don't know, maybe the data lake is just us storing like random crap in like S3. But we're not pulling it into our warehouse where we like, yeah, like you said, kind of it's structured. It's like all the stuff we're doing our analytics on. The lake is just kind of where we store stuff and we, and we might bring it in as a structured table or something or not. Yeah. I could be way off. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Any of us could be way off. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. It's so a lake is a place that is a smaller body of water that people get boats and then they decide to pull themselves around on like little snowboards. I think it's weird. I don't know. You know, wakeboard? Very... Sure. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> a lake. Uh, another thing about a lake, George Clooney lives on a lake. 
I want to move to that town. Yeah. That's another thing about lakes. You're going to move next door to him? Probably not. I'm sure the house his... next door is probably pretty cheap. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. He's on a part that doesn't have a lot of houses next to it. So that's just, I think that's, you know, I have been, so there's like a little villa or whatever. So you like can go past George's house and then there's a little villa there with like a strip of like, you know, a butcher and a couple little marketplaces and then small houses, probably generational houses. But for the most part, you're not getting near George. I'll go. I I have a better chance go seeing his dad in Augusta, Kentucky, by the way. So we're from the same area. Not me and Robbie, but George and I. You could probably tell, you know, it's like George Clooney. No, I was going to say, you really we can. We all look like, the same, yeah. Like, you guys both don't age. Anyway. I don't get, like, I feel like I feel older than you most of the time. Mm. Just looks, just looks. Okay, so I do, so technology things. So you have some tutorials around voice flow. Actually, when I first came across I your profile, I was like, I was like, oh, she works at voice flow, but you don't work at voice flow. No, you you just like to like build some things there and then you're helping others build things there by creating tutorials. So can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, so I actually don't do that much anymore. I think I was looking for like a passion project or something I could do outside of work because I don't really find like the typical SQL projects for your portfolio like exciting. It's like mm-hmm. download a data set and try to clean it. Like this isn't much different from what I do at work, not very exciting. Whereas I feel like web developers or app developers, it can be drastically different and much more fun. So I was randomly looking for something to do as a passion project and I stumbled upon like the idea of AI automation and then that's how I found voice flow and I started learning it myself and I ended up making a tutorial only because something that I was trying to do there was no tutorial available for it and since I had this idea that I, I might want to start doing content I'm like why don't I make a tutorial because what if someone else wants to do this exact thing mm-hmm. and you know it got a lot of views it became popular because again no one was doing it that specific way and so I kind of like leaned into that because I thought this might be the thing I want to do outside of work and I became an affiliate and I still think it's an amazing tool I don't like I genuinely don't like any of the competitors but I I think that AI is very cool it's really really hard to keep up with outside of work I just don't have enough time and I'm not passionate enough about it to keep up with it. So I think I've just kind of fallen behind and it's not really what I want to do. And I am trying to figure out then what I want to make tutorials or content about because I do like making tutorials. I'm a mentor at work and I find mentorship very important and I like teaching, especially at the beginner level. I think I like introducing people to technical concepts from like a explain like I'm five point of view. Right. So that's how I got started with voice flow. But I don't, yeah, like I said, really do it anymore because I'm not going into it seriously. And I think if you're not giving it 100%, you can't compete with people who are. So I might as well just find something else that I'm actually passionate about. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. I wasn't familiar with that tool. So you introduced me to that. Although, yeah, AI is is kind of a wide net too. So like mm-hmm. you can make so many different things with it. I there definitely... are a lot of things. Oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. There are a lot of things people are building that you know look like it's AI, and it's really not. So mm. a lot, a lot of people are. You can build actually something on VoiceFlow without using any of the AI components. So even if I did build something, it doesn't necessarily like have to be AI or as heavily reliant upon AI as you might think other ones are. So yeah, I do feel like, you know, I, I think there's a meme about this. It's like the Scooby-Doo, like uncovering the bad guy. And it's like, yeah. AI is really just a bunch of if-then statements. <laughs> <laughs> Which is possible yeah. too. Yeah, right. I don't know that it's not. I haven't seen the source code. <laughs> mm. I mean, if chat GPT is that, it's going to be really weird. I mean, it's if it is, they are really bad conditions because I'm like, make me a picture of a guy without a beard. And it's like, here's here's one. And it's like, 
huge beard. And I'm like, mm. no, no beard. And it's like, all right, here's the one with the beard removed, bigger beard. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, can you just oh, do it? <laughs> the pictures this are is... so bad. Yeah. Oh, well, just wait till you see the one Robbie generates for yeah. this episode. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> yeah, I do that for every episode. And you get what you get. I can only throw yeah, so we spend many a little time. And by a little time, it's like 30 minutes max. Or like mm -hmm. that. Like keep going through some iterations. I think they've worked out <laughs> pretty decently. Yeah. I some of them have been really good. Yeah. Like there's some real like the Ken Wheeler one. That one just feels <laughs> like so so big. Yeah. Uh, like Versace robe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, his robe. I yeah. actually don't, I don't know the photo, but I, I know the, I guess the episode. I skimmed through it and once I, I didn't notice the Versace on the black part, but then I noticed once he picked up his glass, the cuff, and I actually messaged him. I was like, did you wear a Versace robe on that episode? Did you text him? Yeah. You did, yeah, because... From his phone number that he just put on the he episode? he put on the internet <laughs> and it works. Oh, I yeah. didn't know he was on the episode. So I, I just kind of skimmed through it and watched the whole thing. But I, I did have his number from before. And so I messaged him because since I was going on, I was like, did you wear your row? Because yeah. that's baller. Yeah. I loved yeah. that. He, he yeah, he gave out his shit. real number on the episode. Yeah. We were like, yeah. that has oh, to be a God. fake number. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, I forget who it was. Somebody was like, oh, I texted blah, blah, blah. You know, texted this with, with Ken. And I was like, oh, cool. You got his number? And he was like, no, I just tried the one from the episode. <laughs> I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, that was. I didn't even pay attention. Oh, yeah, God, Ken's no. the worst. He gets me to buy crap that I don't need. He is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you going to Miami? No, I don't. I don't really. I you have not react. been to my. Have not been to Miami, but I just I don't think I like the vibe. Oh, yeah. Mm. I just think there's so many other places I want to go first that mm. I'm not spending money on Miami anytime soon. That's fair. Yeah, I have not been to Miami either. I've been to a lot of places. I've been to plenty of Florida that makes me be like, mm, I don't know about Florida, but some folks I'm going to It's a little different than most of Florida. There. Yeah, I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah, I went once for a work trip and it was, I didn't do anything fun while I was there, but. It's just like lots of water. Like it's kind of weird that there's like a skyscraper with like water and like hmm. it's just like I don't know. It's weird. Feels like that would be structurally not good, but I don't know. It's a vibe. My my wife used to do a put on a conference. She used to be an event coordinator for a tech company and I would put on a conference there like every other year. So she went a bunch and then I was always like, "Eh, I'm okay." But this time I think I'm I'd be going... more interested in European ones. Of course. Oh, for, for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Where's your ideal European destination? I think it depends what I'm doing. I think if I'm a senior I'm, engineer, it depends. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it, I think if I'm looking more to like party, I would go to Amsterdam. More to like relax, I'd probably go to like Italy. I don't even know if there's conferences in Italy, but. There are. There's some in Rome and, and Milan that I've seen a couple of times. So I haven't gone to any. I've been to Italy a bunch just because we have friends there and whatever. And we're trying to move there. So Ooh, exciting. Yeah, that's the whole George Clooney. He lives in Como. So it's like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, party in Amsterdam. That's true. I don't know. I've, only, I've been to Amsterdam, but I'm also like. You know, you can go on this street or you can go on this street. So I just kind of go over here. But mm -hmm. people like it. Yes, I'm going to go this summer. So I've only actually ever been to Paris. So oh, this summer okay. I'm going to have a European trip. And I don't have it fully planned out yet. But obviously Italy, Spain, the Netherlands, and Germany are definitely on the list. Interesting. I can give you feedback and or nothing at all if you don't care. Uh, oh, I would love it all. Be. But yeah, I've been to all of those places a number of times. I lived in Europe for like seven months. So. Ooh, okay. Yeah, just I would in Italy to... though, right? How or did you time? live somewhere else? Just in Italy though, right? Or did you live no, somewhere no. else? No, no. I was in England, Ireland, Scotland, Spain that time. Italy. And I think it was it. It's like five countries. Yeah. Hmm. So okay. this is a serious nomad life. When he said, 
<laughs> yeah. So I turned 31 and sold all my stuff and signed up for a bunch of volunteer things and took off. So it was a while ago. I would yeah. love to do that. I have my dog, though, and I, I looked up taking him to Europe, and I just have to get him, like, microchipped, and it didn't seem, like, that difficult. But the part that bothered me the most is, you know, they were—I read a blog about taking your dog, and they were talking about, you know, if you take him out during the day, but then you want to randomly stop into a restaurant to eat or something, like, it would limit right. you, or yeah, um, if I wanted to go out without him, like, do I feel bad leaving him, like, at the Airbnb, like, somewhere he's never been before, and so I just decided that— since this trip is, I'm going to be moving around a lot. I'm not going to take him. But I think if I did go to purposely live somewhere for like a month or two, then I would. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they have the nomad visas and all that kind of stuff too. So I don't know do how Do you have to be under 30 for those or something? No, I don't think there's an age restriction. I think there's just an remember. income okay. restriction. Or maybe oh, wait. it was a Hold on. Work Are you not age? under 30? No, I am 30. I'm turning 31 this year. Mm. There we go. Chuck's but turning 75 this year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. He looks great for his age, though. Yeah. You do look great. <laughs> I am older than 31 for sure. <laughs> Probably. Aren't you like 32? 33. Oh be 34 this year. Gosh. Yeah. Everybody gets older, and so do that's, I. That's how it works, usually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. So are we I in? do want to yeah yes. ask about some non tech things. We were obviously just talking non tech already, but uh, you mentioned looking for a standing desk and treadmill. Did you pull the trigger on any of that? No, I I actually I feel like the bad reviews of it really stuck with me because it was like you know it's loud, mm. it's annoying to move, you know, and I think the cost of a standing desk and the treadmill is just not worth it. Like, I'll just go to the gym. All of yeah. these things combined, like, like it being annoying and the cost. And, like, I love the desk I have now. It's, like, an L shape. So, like, mm -hmm. on one side, I have my monitors. And then on the other side, I have, like, my calendar and, and my notebook and everything. So, it's more, like, admin stuff. I just think, well, I haven't seen the standing L shaped desk. There could be one. But I just think. Yeah, there the are. cost and the cons, I don't really want to do it. Mm. So, yeah, the the moving, if you mean moving the treadmill, so mm -hmm. I am sitting on a treadmill right now. So, like, I just put my chair on the treadmill, which is fine. <laughs> like, Is it? Because, it, the, okay, they make ones that are easier to move, but I have a really beefy treadmill, so it mm -hmm. is really hard to move. So I just I put see. the chair on top of it, and, like, it's fine. It doesn't. Yeah, I have like one you could roll like off and folds. hurt yourself or something. <laughs> I have a treadmill that folds, and so you mm -hmm. can like put it under when you want to use it. Now that said, I don't, I don't even have it in this space anymore. So I just have that like in a home gym kind of thing. And I have a standing desk that I think like the better my desk got, the less I ever put it in standing position. And again, it could be like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know when I put it in a standing position when I need to mess with the cords. It's, yeah. it's like, like lifting a car. Take yes. on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like lifting the car to work on it. I, de yeah. I definitely do that, but otherwise, yeah. not that much. We should shout out B Flow Desks. Go buy a desk from GoBeeFlow.com. That's the website, yeah. right? Yeah. It is one day I'll and remember to get cool. the code and we will give it to people, but I don't have it. <laughs> we had a code. I don't even know. <laughs> Those desks are cool. They, they do a whole bunch of things for cable management, but, mm -hmm. and then got I did that really well. Yeah. It's got a, like a slot there. And so you throw a bunch of can cables under. And when I first set it up, I definitely did a good job of that. And then I added a couple of things and now it's a mess again. Yeah. As soon as you need to add a cord after you've done it all, you're like, yeah, fuck no, it. You just I'm take out. them all out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like, <laughs> no. How do I get around this? Yeah. My cable management is awful. Yeah, how are you going to be famous on Twitter? Because I won't call it other things. If you can't get your cable management game together, you got the t-shirt game going on. But what about cable management? Because I think, I mean, it's that bad from the top. It's the bottom side, and so I, it's kind of like, do you guys have a junk drawer that you like everything in your house is organized? Oh, yeah. We have one drawer you just throw everything into. 
but kind of how I feel about the bottom of my desk. So just don't look there. Don't you don't if you don't look at it, it's fine. Yeah. From the top, it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean that's reasonable. I have like a big pile of cords on the ground because I have the like power cord for the desk and like a power strip and mm-hmm. like the treadmill power cord and like <laughs> the a bunch of stuff because that stuff has to go up and down so it can't be tucked away. So like mm-hmm. it can't right. be but so good. I want an image of you on the treadmill working with the <laughs> desk down in my this layer. You mean actually standing on the treadmill? Yeah, or like yeah, sitting yeah. on the Okay. Maybe I do both, actually but... use the treadmill. Both. But okay. m- both. Yeah. both. <laughs> Only during meetings. I think during meetings is a good time because you could just be like this and then you're like, I'm not listening, but I wasn't going to anyway. You're well, just like I, panting I... into the mic. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, don't I do use this meetings. mic. I do it for, for coding meetings. time. <laughs> yeah. That's a real flex, by the way. If you break out this stuff, which I have done a couple of times in meetings. Oh, like I do really, it all the time. Do you? Yeah. yeah I, uh-huh. I Anytime I'm at home and someone time, but... makes me go to a meeting, I'm like, look at like, my shit. Hey, it's oh, me, I'm Robin. Camera Robin. off. Camera off all the time. Camera off. I used to always be, but like, I feel like it's better to be seen now. Like, people remember you were there and like, I don't know, it's good for like future. What do you want to do? Are you trying to get promoted? Yeah. Or are you trying to just be like, I'm just trying to get this? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. That's Actually, that is the thing. I have a new manager and I'm actually a bit worried that if we don't have a good relationship, that it, it could be a negative for my like performance reviews. And, right. and so now I'm thinking I got too comfortable with my camera off, not really saying that much in meetings and, you know, other people who enjoy being a leader, like take letting them take lead because I don't mind sitting back what doesn't matter to me. But now... <laughs> With a new manager, I'm like, if this is the only thing she knows, like, do I really need to step it up before performance reviews? I mean, possibly so, because what are the metrics for that, right? Like, it might be there's recency syndrome. So what do I remember Mm -hmm. about, you know, interactions with you? Otherwise, what are they looking like? Looking in JIRA for, like, task completed? Like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't hear a lot from Mal. She says this in her one-on-ones. Looks like in Jira, she closes a lot of tickets. I don't know. You know, maybe there's that. But yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. perception is reality, I think, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing I've been learning more recently, which it doesn't seem natural, but like just always post about stuff you're doing. Be like in Slack or whatever. Be like, I did this shit. Like, yay. <laughs> and then like shit, yay. It's weird because it's like, I don't want to toot my own horn it isn't like it's not natural to do it feels weird but like people remember the stuff you said you did and they're like that person does a lot of work they're always saying they're doing this stuff like you know it's so that's that's my hack to like look like you're doing a lot of work (laughs) just constantly annoy people that's the thing though is people on my team don't seem to actually talk that much in team in the team channel and so I don't work on Fridays. I just work four 10-hour days instead. And every time on a Monday I go look at what happened on Friday, like nobody had said anything in the chat. Mm. And I feel like I'm very annoying because I'll talk all the time. I'm like, by the way, I'm going to be out of office at this time. Or, oh, my God, I got these errors. Has anyone done it? And, like, I, I talk a lot and I feel very annoying. And I don't know <laughs> if actually that's going to be a good thing. I, don't know. I, I don't think know. it's better anybody, than the alternative. Yeah, like, a, like yeah, being perceived as being like just in the background, and I don't know what they're doing or what's going on. If you're just camera off in the meetings, but you're very vocal other other places, you know, one on ones with your manager, right? Like mm-hmm. you'd also just say like, "Hey, just want to check in on your perception on how I'm doing." Like I don't think that's crazy. Mm, true. Then you could just keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just say most of the time in meetings I'm camera off because I just I'm I'm wearing the exact same thing every single day and like my dog is on my lap. Yeah, right. Like you're like yeah. this isn't yeah. No, I get that. And that's kind of a nice thing about remote work. Like, can we enjoy oh, yeah. that? Do we have to set up a professional podcast studio? No. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> 
So what I'm really wondering, let's see here. So for you, you're a couple hours ahead in Montreal. Will dinner be Costco hot dogs? Oh my God, I wish, but I don't have a car and Costco's far. <laughs> oh, mm. if that's Costco why it's delivered, like this. I would order. Yeah. Can you Uber Eats Costco hot dogs? I don't think you can. No, I would if you could. <laughs> you can. What, what, what is the grocery getting thing? Instacart? Instacart. You can't Instacart Costco, but I don't think they get, like, hot food. I do. <laughs> the thing is, I do. <laughs> because there, there are grocery stores nearby, but Costco is just great. Because I do like buying in bulk. And they, they do have things that, obviously, other stores don't. So right. I actually do buy from Instacart. I don't do it that often because they actually do mark up the price oh, on the sure. app. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I am paying more, plus the, like, delivery fee. If I'm not paying delivery fee, it's because you're paying the membership fee to get free right. delivery. Yep. And then, you know, you, you want to tip the guy. And there was once even this guy, there was a bunch of construction. He had to park like two blocks away. He came to my door. He was sweating. So I tipped him <laughs> extra because I just felt so bad. Right. And so there's like, it adds up. So I, I don't order from Costco that much. But if they delivered hot dogs, I would be first in line. I feel virtually. like the, the dollar fifty is really negated, though. Yeah, you With would probably whole... have to. It'd be a minimum of like four hundred at a time. Yeah, <laughs> like they'll exactly. they'll ship you four hundred. <laughs> oh, that's so, like. Have you seen those, the Korean ones? They're kind of like corn oh, yeah. dogs and have yep. all the crazy things on them. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so I'm definitely that person that's like, oh, I gotta order like a minimum to get the free delivery or whatever, and I'll yeah, order like yeah. six, even though I'm only gonna eat like two. <laughs> I'll just keep them throughout the next days because I'm like, I have to get pre-delivery. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Hey, oh, lunch is covered. That's a win. Yeah. So this is what you need to figure out is how to replicate the Costco hot dog experience at home. So you order the Costco buns and the Costco dogs. And then how do you make them to make them the same? Because they steam them, I think, or something. I don't know. I am an awful cook. <laughs> I, I have a post from a while ago where it and it was supposedly National Boyfriend Day. I was like trying mm. to cook dinner for this person and the buns on the hot dog were burnt completely black, like 100 oh. percent black. I don't know it if you know like how little... it goes, but that's not right. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> and so we didn't eat them. Obviously, I was like, OK, so we have fries and a patty. <laughs> we do not have a bun. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not we'll a good cook. Ever... Like, well, let's try paleo style. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I made fries. a goal. Yeah. I made a goal of this year to try to become a better cook and like mm -hmm. buy nice things for my kitchen because everything is crap. My knife, it, it, you know, when they say like the test is if you can cut like a tomato nicely. Yeah, it does not cut a tomato nicely. My cutting board is falling apart because I put it in the dishwasher. It's wooden and you're not supposed oh, yeah. to. No, you're not. Yeah. Plastic. Yeah. All of, and then you can do all of these yeah. things. Yeah, I'm not a good cook. <laughs> but I want to make more money mostly because I want someone to just cook every meal for me. Mm, that's cooking the dream. is like one of the worst things, one of the worst activities. Someone was like, <laughs> let's do a cooking class. I'd be like, this is the worst date you could have came up with. You could have done that in <laughs> Thailand and made amazing Thai food, though. Oh, so my mom does. My mom loves to cook. And the thing is, my dad, so he's, my dad's comedian, but he does also love to cook. Neither of them passed that down to me. Mm. Mm. A life skills thing. Lee. There was a little yeah. gap there on that. I yeah, like my brother cook, but doesn't it... have it either. Yeah. Uh. I feel like it takes too much time. Like there's stuff I would rather do. So it's never like. I know. Yeah. I'm the opposite. Yeah. I actually find cooking very. I don't like cleaning. I like. Oh, I definitely. had this deal for a very long time with my wife and then things shifted. We had kids and moved and all of that. But it used to be I cook, she cleans. And I was like, this is amazing. I can just mm -hmm. come up with creative things and do my thing and whatever else. And then she figures it out. And now it's kind of the opposite, which. There's not that much creativity in cleaning up after dinner. And so I hate yeah. that. But oh, yeah. 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 I, I would rather just burn the kitchen down and start over. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> all right. So let's just order out every night because that's what I'd rather yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
All right, we are about at time here. Uh, is there anything you want to plug before we end? Me? Yeah, yeah. I have nothing to plug. Maybe myself. I mean, I don't really have, I don't have like an app in the app store. I you would have love a merch people to store. download. I mean, I have a merch store like mostly as a joke because, right. <laughs> because as co CEO co of HTMX. <laughs> yes. Okay. As co CEO of HTMX, I plug them. But I don't use it, but I love them. Uh, mostly, <laughs> yeah. I respect I respect the marketing, like yeah, to turn yeah. it into a huge like meme and to like have everyone be like CEO. It's like I became CEO without even knowing what they do. Yeah, but a lot of I've read about people talking about what they do, and it, it does seem useful, honestly. <laughs> but I, I, I respect the meme because as just a oh, shit poster. Yeah. yeah, I got a pickle shirt too. So, oh, the same one that I got. The platypus uh, pickle? No, a little bit different. But oh, the CEO I meant, pickle. Yes, and I meant to wear it today. I totally forgot until now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I totally yeah. respect them. I have nothing to plug. I'm just like a shit poster. I just love... I just like making people laugh. Like if someone was like, I think you're really funny, that would be way, way better than someone being like, oh, I think you're really pretty or I don't know, something that's just very surface level. Or asking if you're an AI bot. <laughs> you know what? That has actually stopped lately. I think the That's more good. videos and content that I do, they're finally like they're a real person. <laughs> actually, good. have you Excellent. seen the movie Hot Chick? I haven't. I don't no. think so. It's, what's his name? Is it Rob, Rob something? He has dark curly hair. He's a comedian. Or not a comedian, but he does like comedy roles. Schneider? Rob Schneider? No. Is it Rob Schneider? Yeah. Does he have curly dark hair? I think so. Mm, it might be him. Like so he, he him and the, and uh, is it Rachel McAdams who play who plays the oh, notebook wow. Mean Girls, that girl? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they, She's they switched Canadian, bodies. By the way. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so I'm a big fan of her. And they switch bodies. So he goes into her body, right? And he like doesn't really know how to act. I've always kind of felt that way, not saying that I'm a hot chick, but, you know, that people will be like, oh, you're, you're like a pretty girl in tech or you're, you just came out of nowhere online. You must be a bot. And I'm like, listen, I'm very awkward. I do sit at home talking to my friends on Discord. I don't want to go out to the club. I don't do any of these things. I, you might think I do. I don't want to go on your like yacht in Miami. So sometimes I feel like hot chick. I'm like, I, I don't know what to do with this. Just let me be like anonymous online, which is why I didn't join like the internet publicly until August last year. Interesting. Yeah. So what you'd like to plug is Hot Chick starting, starring Rob Schneider and Rachel McAdams. She's we from guess. Toronto, by yeah. the way. <laughs> she used to be in my top five list a long time ago, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Not anymore? Why? Well, probably still, but just, you know, I don't know. I haven't. Yeah, the list. Recently. I haven't. I, well, it was laminated list, and so I haven't changed it or whatever mm. else. But I, <laughs> I had this funny thing with my wife before she was a, my wife before. And so I would pick people on my top five list that I had like six degrees of separation from. So it was like. Oh, yeah, I know someone who grew up in the same neighborhood as Rachel McAdams. Boom, done. Could happen. Who knows? Oh, my <laughs> gosh, yeah. that's so funny because I actually think of people in the same way. I saw that someone followed me and commented on one of my tweets who is the sibling of a person who knows the Kardashians. I texted mm. like five people being like, I'm two degrees away from the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot for yeah. the stars. Oh, yeah. We're just trying to get Ryan Reynolds on here. So, yeah, if you, if you know oh. anyone for that. Also Canadian. So, who yeah. knows? You guys know each other. Uh, if you, he you is great. He is hilarious. That's uh, so he's kind of the vibe that I like. You know, uh, obviously he's attractive and he's successful, but he's just, he's hilarious. Him and Blake, yeah. they're hilarious. And that's what I much rather have someone say about me. Be like, oh, follow Mal. Like, she's so funny. I love her stuff. Mm. That is way better than being like, oh, there's this hot chicken tech. I hate yeah. that. Well, you're yeah. on the path. I think I think you're on the path. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So where can people follow you? I think all of my socials now are malware underscore YML. Okay. You love YAML. Got it. Hey.
I mean, malware was taken. I didn't know how else to be like in tech. And I, I yeah, I had no idea what else to put, but I, I use AML files at work all the time. And yeah. your profiles are kind of your configuration. If you want to understand me, you just read all of my stuff, so. Wow, that's deeper than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, yeah. And Chuck's camera is broken, so we're at time here anyway. So thanks, everyone, for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe. Leave us some ratings and reviews. We appreciate it, and we will catch you next time.